What's up, guys? It has been a long, long time since I have done anything on the YouTube channel. So if you are here before the start of the live stream, thank you very much, guys. And if you have a beverage of choice, have a drink. So as always, guys, if you are watching this on YouTube, be sure to hit that like button and if you're listening to this on one of your podcasting platforms stitcher radio oh amazon spotify apple podcast whatever apple's calling it now um give it a five star review so let's get into just what the heck i have been up to in just one second after a word from my buddy rick you want to catch bigger bass this year? If so, get Monster Bass. It's the only fishing subscription box company that handpicks the baits based upon the area of the country where you live and fish. So if you want to get a box delivered to your door every month with the best brands like Booyah, Live Target, River to Sea, Z-Man, don't accept substitutes. Go with the best, Monster Bass. We'll ship you everything you need, we'll show you how to use it, and help you crush your personal bass this year. Join now. So, if you guys can, if you don't already have a subscription of Monster Bass, please go check them out. They are a big supporter of mine, and quite honestly, with the reason why I haven't been on, and they've been so cool about it, I can't say enough about Rick and the gang over at Monster Bass, so definitely check them out if you haven't already. So, you guys want to know where I've been. Um, a lot of you know that I am actually a sales rep in the industry, and there's this little thing called COVID-19 going on. And it has definitely been an interesting year for everybody. Uh, but it's been a really hectic year because of that for me. Um, mainly because, well, the United States has seen about 10 million new anglers uh, participating in the sport right now. Uh, so that is people that in the last five years haven't purchased a license, um, haven't been fishing in five years. So we have a lot of new people. So the need for gear is pretty big, and that has been keeping me really busy um, ever since the state of Michigan opened back up and we could uh, go back into retail stores. It has been insanely, insanely busy for me. Uh, I... I think it was in a month of June. I did 6,000 miles and never left the state driving around to customers. So I have been spending all my time taking care of them. So you guys have fishing tackle throughout the state to actually go out and fish. So that explains where the heck I have been. And with that, finally had a development on my boat. Um, some of you are aware of the fact that, uh, well, my boat suffered some unfortunate event. We'll leave it at that. Um, and kind of had some issues with it. Let me see if I can find what I'm looking for. Yeah, there it is. So, I don't know what happened exactly. Um... But I ended up getting about a two foot long tear in the haul right near the keel line. And I'm not sure really what the delay has been. Um, if it was on Ranger's part, my dealer's part, or whatever it was. But either way, it took a long time to finally get things in motion. And as of, uh, I think it was yesterday and today, um, some, some good stuff has happened. Um... I actually went up to where my boat is currently getting ready to be shipped back down to Ranger for them to take a look at it and had to remove some things. Um, trolling motor, prop, grass off the boat, a couple odds and ends that I had mounted in the boat that I didn't take off. Had to get those off. And while doing so, I actually put my head down in the boat and I want to show you guys what I've seen so you guys all know what happened. Um, but yeah, so let me move this up to where I can see it. That red circle right here is the big issue with the boat. And I'll zoom in. Well, one of the two issues. 
So besides the two foot long tear that's on the actual haul along the keel line, you can see on this weld, it has totally broke and snapped. And then in the second picture, a little harder to see because it's a little grainy, but there is a start of another one right there. So uh, we got that break right there. Sorry about the noise there. I got windows open, the dog's interrupting. Uh, so I got a break there. So those of you that are on podcast, you can't exactly see it, but I did post a picture of it. Um, this is actually up in the bow of the boat. So let me zoom out here, kind of give you a feel for where it's at. So this here is the actual keel of the boat. This here is the rod locker, center rod locker. And this is the left side for those of us that don't know. Port and starboard, this is the port side. Um, these are the rod tubes coming out, the white tubes there. And that is where the haul basically failed there. But another thing that concerns me, and <clears throat> I brought this up with the rep and ranger, is you can see a lot of burning in a few areas. It looks like the welding didn't go quite as well as it should have. So it is heading down to Ranger for them to actually evaluate and see what's going to happen. Essentially, I've been told one of three things will happen. One, if there was no internal structure damage, they were going to sand everything off and clean it up, re-weld everything back together, send her back to me. The second was if they looked in there and seen there was issues, they have to pull up the deck and see if it's repairable. The third, and honestly kind of the one I'm hoping for in this situation, is they're just going to give me a, whole, a brand new haul altogether because of this. So we'll see where this goes. I'm sure there will be new developments in the saga. And when everything gets said and done, I will definitely do a full video explaining everything that happened, how this process goes. Um... It has definitely been a nice learning experience. Uh, David Swinside from Dual Realis, I actually reached out to him because I know he had some issues in the past with a warranty and kind of asked advice on how he dealt with it, and this is where I've gone with it. Um, sent Ranger a nice letter, um, got gobs of pictures and all that fun stuff. So, but yeah, so that's what's up with the boat. Got a tear in the hull, got some internal structure that broke. I didn't hit anything at all other than the water, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, but yeah, I'm out of practice here, guys. I don't, I'm uh, throw up questions if you got anything. Uh, I know another thing I want to talk about and kind of highlight is new product that are that's coming out. Um, so let's get right into that. I have a whole bunch of windows opened up. So my desktop is a total just mess and just cluster right now. Um, I want to start out with uh, my favorite brand. There it is, backwards. Yep, Shimano. Um, let me pull this up for you guys. And some of you, if you're keen on following um, everything that's out there that gets released, you might already know about a lot of this stuff. But let's go over it really quick anyways. So first and foremost, this is actually going to be the replacement for the Stratic CI4, which is my all-time favorite reel from Shimano. Um, so one that all my spinning rods are set up for. And it's literally the same thing. So the Van 4, uh, for the most part, is going to be the same. It's replacing the Stratic CI4. A couple new things. Um, the MGL rotor is new. Silent Drive is a newer feature. Um, just uh, extra development of some stuff they've already done. X Protect, I gotta read up on what that is, and they have long stroke spools on some of these models as well. It's got the Agani framing, um, just all, all good stuff. So the MGL MGL rotor is actually 48% less rotational inertia. So essentially it's lighter, it doesn't have as much mass going around the reel. It should turn very, very easy. I cannot wait to get my hands on these guys. I think they're due out November, December. If they're not already starting to trickle out on a few places, um, they have micro modular two gears um, on the gearing, which is really nice. Um, if you're not familiar with micro modulus gearing, it's just basically a lot of smaller teeth linking together so that there's a lot more surface area having contact in the gear. Um, and that tends to make it feel like a little bit of heavier feel to the reel, where Daiwa feels a little bit looser and lighter, um, if that's a good way to describe it. But uh, there's a lot more contact, so it actually is a stronger connection at that gear. Uh, silent drive. Uh, it's just a uh, basically a, a, 
uh, adjustment to their actual drive gearing and shaft and everything makes it nice and quiet and smooth. Nice Irigani gear, cold forge, all that good stuff. Uh, let's see. Let's get in the nit and gritty. So long stroke spools uh, basically going to improve your casting distance, especially with braids, which is a nice thing. Um, these are the models that you're going to see out on the market. So there's actually going to be a 500 and a 2000 size, which has not been available in the U.S. So they're going to bring that out, which you're going to notice the uh, retrieval rates and gear ratios on this is really interesting. Um, the 1000 is a really nice panfish, 5.6 on the 500, uh, your 6 and your 25 high gear. And your 3,000, which is really nice if you're trying to fish heavier lines. That's a really, really good choice uh, for everybody there. Or if you just, or you're steelhead fishing, you need a little more capacity. The big thing is, is the 25 and the 3,000. Look at the drag weights. That big jump from the from the 2,000 and 1,000 up to here, 20 pounds of drag, and then 4,000 to 5,000, which is usually used for more saltwater and pike type fishing for us here in freshwater um it's actually a carbon drag versus the felt and metal spacer spacers that they normally use uh, so you have a carbon drag which uh 13 uses carbon quite a bit abu garcia i think think a little bit of Daiwa and even Luz uses it so it is a really good material proven out there and as you can see the retail price is 229 up to 240 so um that just shows a breakdown let's get down to the next thing uh stratic mgl 70. so this is just a smaller body of the stratic or the stratic the slx um it's gonna be really nice uh this is more for your drop shot your finesse techniques um ned rigging stuff like that's 149 dollars so they're gonna have some interesting handle designs um over in Japan, they only have the 42 millimeter, but here in the U.S., we have a little bit bigger hands. So the 45 inch will be on the slower gear ratios, and on the high speeds, we're going to have a 48 inch or 48 millimeter handle on there. So that will be nice for many of us with bigger hands. Um, <clears throat> you have MGL spool, Hagani body, compact, light, brass gears. Can't beat that. So I'm just kind of reading through a lot of stuff that I get. Uh, being in the industry, the stuff I get to see ahead of the, ahead of the curve. Uh, the Corrado MGL 70. This is replacing the Corrado 70 that has been on the market for a long time. It was the I series. Uh, so we're going to upgrade it to the Corrado K lineup. And you have the MGL. Um, now you are going to see that there's some new models over here. You have the 300s. We'll get to those in just a second. And one that I'm extremely happy to see come back is the Power Geared. Um, I actually use the Corrado I currently. I will be upgrading it. So if anybody's looking for a Corrado but doesn't want to buy a brand new one, hit me up either on Instagram or Facebook. I will have a Corrado I power geared, which is a slower gear ratio, up for sale. It's great for cranking. It's great for spy baiting. Um, it's been used, but definitely I will be hooking somebody up. So this is actually a great picture showing how the micro modular module gear works versus a standard regular gear so you can see just it's smaller teeth but a lot more surface contact and it's actually very very strong uh yeah mgl spool which is some stuff from the japanese market again the handle things same thing as slx corrado 300 is a big one to see come back uh they didn't do a 300 in the i series but they did do it in the g series which stuck around for a long time that was that dark green one from Two versions ago so they bring in this one back this is going to be kind of your uh northern pike swim bait light duty musky um deal if you're looking to throw heavier stuff definitely want to go to the tranks 300 over the corrado 300 so if you're looking for you know a heavy duty but smaller frame that's the way you want to go uh cross carbon drag is the name for carbon carbon washer basically uh, there's three, there's 200 with power gear. Next, there it is. Getting there. What's the gear ratio? 5.1. So 21 inches per turn. I absolutely love using these for cranking. Um, let's see. Is there anything else good in here? Oh yeah. Zodius is getting a overhaul. Um, so be on the lookout in the stores for sweetheart deals on Zodius. You might find some good deals on the current model, but the new version is actually going to, the, 
butt section is actually part of the rod. It's all one piece. So that's going to be really, really neat. Uh, it's got Fuji K Alkanite guides and a sick tip. So that's good. These are all the models going to be available on it. Um, but it's going to stay the same. Uh, the Calaris is getting an overhaul in looks and feels. It's going to have a wind grip type uh, foregrip or, you know, around the, where the real seat is. So that's going to be interesting to see how that feels. But the, the Calaris rods are really nice at a $79 price point. Um, if your local shop carries it, definitely check that out. Uh, I know the Compry got an overhaul not too long ago as well. Uh, the Stimula, uh, this is their one of their lower end rods, but this got a major overhaul. They dropped about half an ounce, roughly, out of it. So that's going to be nice to see. There is some walleye jigging rods available in a sense. $25 rod. It's actually a really nice rod. I got my dad one of these for uh, birthday. I like the looks of this version versus the old version much, much better. Uh, Compry Musky rods got an overhaul. We'll cover more of that down the road, possibly. Uh, but a lot of people don't know this, but Shimano does have ice rods. They came out last year, and, well, we had a terrible ice season, so most people had no idea it even happened. Uh, so take a look out for those. The one thing that I'm excited to see come back is the Symmetry family of reels, but it's only coming back in a combo. And as you can see over here on the chart, those are the models. They're actually going to be matching the reels up to the rods for you. It's a hundred dollar combo. I got a feeling this is going to be the best hundred dollar spinning combo on the market uh, for 2021. So if you are a fan of the symmetry, it is back, but only in combo form. So be on the lookout for that. Um, the seven six medium heavy would be a really nice northern pike um, setup. You know, for throwing daredevils here in Michigan, it'd be a great setup for that. Uh, that's just the aesthetics of the reel. Uh, gave it a little bit of a facelift from the old one that left the market, but it's still really, really nice. Uh, SLX is adding some glass rods to it for cranking. Uh, SLX rods are not bad, and then everything else is going to be saltwater oriented. And tackle bags. See if there's anything special in tackle bags. Um, they just kind of freshened everything up, gave a fresh look to it. Uh, but for the most part, it's same old, same old on the tackle bag side of things. Uh, they do have some new jackal baits coming out. They're redoing the tools. They're going to have a nice look to them. So that's it on the side of that on Shimano. Um, Shimano is definitely neck and neck with Daiwa as a king of the reels, Frank. Uh, definitely, I, there is some Daiwas that I'm going to highlight here in a minute that I am a big fan of. And I really like how they feel. And I have an interesting video idea going head-to-head, -head, baitcaster versus baitcaster between Shimano and Daiwa, that I have no idea how it's going to end up. I'm kind of hoping that it works out for in Shimano's favor, but I don't know. It's getting a little dark in here. A little shade going. Um, let's see. Dude, I haven't fished because I haven't had a boat since... Uh, that happened on July 3rd? Took out the boat, zero cameras in the boat. It was just to go out and de-stress because I did so much work in June on the road. It was insane. So, Steve, um, yes, I did get news back from Ranger, um, which is good. Let me pull it back up. They are going to take it down to the factory to take a look at it. It did take a little bit longer than expected. Um, but let me pull this up because it looks like you hopped in just after I pulled that off the window. But... Today, I was up at my dealer and actually found two cracks in the internal structure and that two-foot-long tear that is in the exterior of it. So, there's that. <clears throat> uh, I'm not waiting. I'm, it's just they have to take it down uh, to Ranger, look it over, see what the damage is, and go from there. Um, let's get into Daiwa next. Um, I'm going to pull up just their catalog. If you haven't seen it, you can actually hop on their website, pull it up for yourself and check it out. Um, but they got a nice, nice, nice catalog. So let's scroll through this really quick. Um, they do have a couple really cool new designs happening on a couple reels that I find is really, really, uh, novel. And that's the, um, the MQ stuff. We'll get into that as I get down to it. Um, there's a new Tatula 300, Tatula 300 coming. The SV 
uh, spool system, which I need to play with. I really, really do. Brand new Zillion reel. Uh, where is it at? There it is. There's the Tatula uh, SVTW103. It's a little bit smaller frame, from my understanding, uh, than the standard Tatula. Tatula, they have 300 size, just like the Crowlers are 300 size now. The C. A80. I did a, a review on that here on the channel. If you haven't checked it out, go check out some past videos. I actually covered that. It's actually a really, really nice reel for the money. Um, the Tatula CT. I'm going to zoom in on this. See if it clears up. So this guy here at $129.99 is going to be a really nice complement to the market for those that maybe are not Shimano fans. Um, but it should be a nice reel for anybody that's wanting to get something that price point. Um, didn't get a chance to feel that one. They didn't have a sample of it at our sales meeting. Uh, so that kind of sucked a little bit. But knowing Daiwa, it should be a really, really good reel. It should be a really good competitor to the SLX XT from Shimano, which I absolutely love. Um, if you follow me on Instagram at JC Dropshot, you would have seen a whole bunch of those showed up right around the end of June, first part of July. Um, I loaded up the boat with more of those. Plus, I got tons of Corrados. Uh, Daiwa Alexa wind grip. They're doing a high capacity spool on that one. No big special deal there. This is where the interesting stuff starts to happen with their spinning reels. Um, so last year they released a reel called the Kagi, which is this guy right here, the Kagi Light. Um, the Kagi Light is very similar to the Stratic CI4. I love the overall weight of the reel. I loved how it felt. So they do have the Kagi MGLT coming out this year, which is just a super lightweight version of it altogether. I want to show you guys this right here. This is probably one of the coolest things I have seen in the reel market in quite some time. So kudos to Daiwa for this. Now, there is absolutely no screws holding the reel together on the outside like you normally have on it. This is actually the screw itself. It's one big, huge screw um, that basically screws into the frame, holds everything in place. Your drive gears, everything in one place, and it just screws right in. It's really neat. I got to play with one in person. It's solid feeling. So they have um, a Kagi. MQ uh, being built that way, it does lighten it up a little bit. So that reel is going to be a little more pricey than the basic Kagi. Um, I wish more shops would carry the Kagi in the state of Michigan. It is a great reel. It's another option for you guys. Um, if you're looking for you know something a little more fluid feeling, that's definitely a good reel to go with. And probably one of the best sellers in the state, but it's still kind of a sleeper is the Revros. Uh, the Revros is one of the most solid reels at 50 bucks you're gonna get. Um, I actually like the Revros a little bit better than the Naxav from, from Shimano. Um, side by side, the Revros, I think, is the better reel out of the two, but I still like the Naxav. I own one, I fish with it. So that would be definitely a reel to check out. The Laguna LT, that's new for this year. That's gonna be your $80 uh, price point. So that's gonna be, or excuse me, $39 price point. <clears throat> um, so it's going to be competing with your Sedona, Sienna reels and the Shimano side of it. So that's really cool. Uh, that felt really nice, actually. Um, this guy felt great as well from them. Um, a little more. This is kind of their answer to the basic Stratic that's out there. It felt really nice, though. Um, I still give the nod to the Stratic on that one, though, personally. So that's new from that category. They had something else. Let me see if I can find it. If the previews work with me. I don't think it's going to, so that's not going to work. So let's pull up the next brand up. Um, the next one is going to be 13 Fishing. So 13... Um, does make cool looking product and the first thing up on the list that's new and awesome actually in person this thing is pretty slick looking um, if you're familiar with some of the new truck uh, paint jobs that you're seeing on the market uh, lead foot from Ford this has that look and feel to it that flat paint job but a gloss finish on it so that's the uh, SLD uh, let's see it 275 so it's a really nice reel it does have their bushing system 
their non-bearing system that they've been, that they're now putting through the entire reel. Uh, C2 was around, C3 was around. Uh, I think that's it. That's the only thing really new on the reel side. They do have a bunch of stuff going on on the rods this year. Uh, the fused carbon rod. So this is pretty cool. Um, on a traditional rod, you have a lot of different uh, components coming together um, and that are basically glued onto the blank. So what they're doing with the carbon fuse, it's literally like a, uh, a CNC mold that basically they inject this carbon resin around the blank and it makes the real seat and everything there. So that's going to be really interesting to see how that technology um, evolves in the industry. It's really unique, really new. Uh, Muse Black, same thing that's been for a little while. Um, Omen Black, they added some kayak rods in. So for you kayak guys, there will be some shorter, uh, the rear part of the grip will be a little bit shorter on It's still a 36-ton blank. Um, I do have some of this gen's Omen in the boat, and I fished with it this spring, and I've been fishing with it a little bit here and there when I had time on the road. Um, just to cast for a few minutes. I haven't really done much fishing. Um, but it seems to be fairly durable. It seems like they fixed some of their breakage issues that they've had problems with in the Omens in the past. Uh, Fate Black. They've actually changed, and now it's the Fate V3, so it's version 3. It's all white, everything. That looked decent, actually. And then there's the standard Fate Black. Uh, it's Omen Green stuff. Uh, the Defy series are ones that I think is definitely worth a look. For you guys on a budget at 60 bucks. they're a really nice rod. Definitely check them out. They look sharp. They look better than they do on in their catalog. So uh, They got a bunch of combos. This is probably one of the coolest items on the crankbait side that's coming out, and that's the jabber jaw. I wish I had one to show you guys. I didn't get one in my sample pack, but that bill is actually metal on here, and it actually goes back and forth, and inside the bait, there's some metal posts, so it's actually clicking, and it, it's a square bill, but it kind of had that chatterbait kind of motion to the front of it. Really, really interesting. Uh, Spinwalker, this is their answer to the to the whopper plopper i think i'm not that excited about it quite honestly pathfinder was a cool bait if you guys haven't seen that definitely check it out glidesdale that's their new glide bait uh local special if you are a guy that is looking for a vision 110 type bait and you can't find them and they got the local try that the magic man's actually a really good lip list definitely need, you guys need to try that one out um the shadow spin this is their spy bait it's a little large um, it's three quarters of an ounce. It was a little big for me. I wasn't like blown away by it because it was bigger than I thought it was going to be. It's it's truly a five inch bait with some heft to it. I definitely see it being a good northern pike magnet or a muskie magnet out here because of its size and profile. Um, we got some new crankbaits, the Troll Hunter and Fat Daddy or Flat D Daddy. It's a flat sided square bill. Um, now. They do have some price point stuff coming out. Um, the Whipper Snapper, this is their lower end jerk bait. That's coming out. Uh, Grodito, how are, they, they got some stupid names, I'll admit it. But that's kind of like a Wiggle Wart ask. Uh, some poppers. Um, this thing is really, really cool. The actual soft plastic on it's a elastic y kind of stuff. So. That's actually really cool. I got one of those in my sample box, so hopefully I'll get a chance to do some fishing with it here shortly for you guys when I'm on the road. Like find good pond. They got some more plastics. Nothing super exciting on that side. They do have some cool stuff. Uh, I think probably Fish Lab has the best, hands down the best uh, swim baits right now out there. So if you haven't seen Fish Lab, check those guys out. Uh, yeah, and then the skull caps. These are actually really nice. They got a little bit of like a hard frame. Like, you know those uh, those wrist things as kids growing up, at least my generation, you snap them on your wrist. So these are some nice covers that go around the rails, keep them from getting scratched and beat up. A little pricey, but they're unique enough. Um, I think they're going to hold up well, and they're going to do the job. And I think they're, they're a really nice product um, for everybody. So that would be interesting for them to check out. And you might see them on a counter display in some of the stores. Um, they have a package deal available for it. Uh, they got some new shirts, new clothing, so hopefully some of you guys will get a chance to snag that. I was digging this tarpon, the, the tarpon hat. 
uh, from them. That was pretty neat when I seen that. Uh, let's see. Let's go on to Lose. There's a big news with Lose. Um, if you haven't heard, Kevin Van Dam has jumped ship. And they are, he is now with Luz. Um, so he's representing Luz now. And with that comes a lot of new products from Luz, kind of centered around the man, the myth, the legend here from Michigan, KVD. Uh, you have his Baycaster. It's going to be $139.95 map. Uh, you might see it for a little more net, but that's where that's going to be. He's got a spinning reel. You know, it's a $90 spinning reel. He's got an entire rod series. And what's really interesting about the rod series is that they are numbering the rod um, 1 through 10. Okay? So what the object is for this um, is so a DGC 10 or a DGS whatever and a DCC and then a number. That will tell you what model he's using. So you have to basically describe it. So he's trying to make a numbering system. That's simple, so when he's telling, you know, shooting a video, he goes, hey, I'm using a number one whatever rod. Instead of saying, I'm using a jerkbait rod with this action, this power, he doesn't have to do on the big, long spiel about this. He can just tell you a number, and it's good to go. It's a $100 rod series. Um, I felt some of them. I liked his spinning rods. They felt really nice. The regular casting felt really nice. Uh, the only thing I personally don't like, and this is a personal preference, is his crankbait rods. They're massively thick i just don't like that old school david fritz mentality on the crankbait rods i actually like a graphite crankbait rod um me personally over a glass unless i'm throwing big divers um the laser mgl is getting a little bit of a face off uh face lift not face off uh if you are 80 dollars price range is all you can afford for real the laser is definitely one to look at it's a solid solid performer always has been since day one since it came out the Mock Crush, getting a little bit of update. Should see that around winter um, at many of the stores. Uh, so that's going to be like a, uh, kind of like the Ford Ranger, that orange, that burnt orange color they got. It's the same kind of color. So that's going to be cool. The combos are nice. They're $200 combos on it. Spinning reel, it's a $100 spinning reel. It's very similar to the KVD one from what I feel um when I, I felt it but this is what's cool is some of the real grips um and real seats that they're doing is really unique in that the way they come together there's absolutely no twist it's just it's really neat so i'm interested to see how that holds up and fishes uh the Lou team lose got an update and the fact that they uh created a skipping and pitching reel it's a very very shallow spool it's strictly made for skipping short ranges it only holds 40 yards of 20-pound line, so it's not a lot of line, but it's made purpose-built for skipping. So if you skip docks or you pitch an awful lot, this might be a reel worth checking out. It felt like a solid reel. It is retailing at $200, so it's a lot of money for a very specialized technique that mm, you may or may not like. Um, you're going to see some of that same reel seat technology happening on the... Uh, panfish rods as well here that might help my face a little bit better um until the light changes a bit here uh wally marshall stuff more more rods um didn't really change much elsewhere in the lineup but that's it for those guys i mean that's that's basically it for lose um i want to get into okuma and not because there's a lot of fanfare around okuma but there's a couple items that are very very popular with a lot of people and that is definitely the trolling stuff so convector low profile so if you are jigging detroit river and then going up and whipping the st Clair or whipping even down in the detroit river you have an option here um well, it actually has a flip and switch, which is really interesting. If you're bottom mounts or fishing, this would be a really cool feature for you to have on a reel. It is actually a micro line counter. So it's the same size as your bass low profiles. Okay. 6.3 to 1 gear ratio. It's going to hold 200 and, or 180 yards at 12 pounds. So it's your average bass reel. It's going to retail for around 104, 105 bucks. Comes in a deluxe and a regular. I'm guessing the 
DLX is a left-handed because it's got an L in it. So you have a left and a right-handed. It's going to start showing up this fall. Game plan is October. It might be a little later. I know a few of my customers are really excited when I, I send them a few people some pictures saying, hey, what do you think of this? They were like, oh, yeah. But I also knew they already sold a lot of the standard ones quite a bit. Um, this is actually uh, the CMR Reel. They have some panfish bait runners. So you guys at Icefish, they're looking for, you know, those those Ice Pro, those Slammer Rigs. You know, those rod hole, you put in a rod holder, it goes down the hole, and then fish takes it and all that good stuff. Old school stuff that's turned into jaw jacker and all that stuff. Um, that's a good reel. They make some panfish ultralight sizes of these, and the 3000 was added this year. You get a new bait caster at the $90 price point. Did not feel half bad. It has that wind grip type handle material on it. And that's basically it from Okuma. Let's go into Quantum next. Yeah, I said Quantum. Can you believe I'm actually going to go show you guys something from Quantum? I, I'm kind of shocked by it. So one big change, okay, is Quantum normally has a one, two, or three-year warranty on all their stuff. Starting this next season, everything they offer will have a five-year warranty on it. Now, this warranty cannot be... Taken back to the realtor, the the retail store where you purchased it has to go back to the manufacturer. I cannot stress that enough. So don't bitch and moan at your retailer if he says no, I can't take it back. Some will, even though they're not supposed to. But you're supposed to go back to the manufacturer. In fact, almost every warranty out there now is a manufacturer warranty, not an over the counter through your retailer. So please, guys, help these little mom and pops out. Don't let don't have them deal with returns for you. Go ahead and deal with the manufacturer directly on that so they can get it dealt with for you the correct way. Um, so let's get into the big change. Acris got another facelift. This is currently only one of two reels on the market that is a low profile without a line counter and have a flip and switch. The other one is a loose super duty. A little too pricey for a lot of the techniques we do here in Michigan, you know, while I jigging. But they have white black and lime green they have a ceramic carbon drag system so that's a little bit nicer um they have their micro adjustment acs system which has been around for a while that's the clicking uh tension knob um but yeah standard models on it. they're going to offer some combos in it um i don't think there's a walleye jigging combo but there is a cranking combo on it yeah there's it's just general purpose bass combos on that front Acura Spinger Reels got the same facelift. They're going to do combos as well with it. Um, just general purpose stuff. There's going to be a couple combos only available in Canada, not here in the States. So <clears throat> they actually have an entire Canada series going on over there for them. This is an interesting one. So I actually cannot wait to actually get my hands on this reel and do a product review for you guys. It is the Quantum Invade. The Invade is not an expensive reel. It is $39.99, and it felt like a lot of the $79, $80 reels out there, so I was impressed by it. Um, got a lot of graphite, a lot of plastic parts on it. The tension knob is plastic, if my memory serves me right, so that might be the only major knock I'm gonna have on it. But other than that, it felt really good for $39.99 when we spun it in the, uh, the meeting. Um, embark rods is telescopic rods from quantum. I want to get down to Zebco. Zebco has some major, major upgrades happening, and I'm actually going to show you those. I have those right behind me. Let me go grab them. It's not often that we get handed samples. Of rods and reels actually in our meeting to show customers we usually got to get them out of the warehouse so zepco is overhauling how they actually handle the youth market and this could be timed absolutely perfectly um what they have seen is a lot of those frozen and uh, mickey mouse barbie rods stuff you know those character rods really just no one gives a crap about it anymore so what they're doing is they're going back to some of the basic rod um, thought process for kids. So three to five years old, they meet, the rods are going to be 2.6 feet. 
long. I don't have that one with me, but I do have uh, the second one here, which is the Youth. It's four foot three. Um, it's actually going to come with line already on it. It's got a little carabiner on it, so that they want to hook it to their backpack when they're going down there. Um, it's it's not a bad rod. A lot of hard plastic on it, though. Um, but I think the idea behind this is that it's it's easy for a parent to justify buying it. Um, seems pretty decent for what it is. So we'll see how that does. And then the larger one, which is your preteen and teen, kind of the same deal. Um, I think this is one of the two colors. I'll scroll down here. So you have the Splash, which is that youth shorty, the, uh, the Wildler which is that blue one, and then the uh, Rambler, which is this guy here, which all of them are going to be available in. Um, it's kind of like a seafoam color. They found that in testing to be a little more unisex for both. Definitely geared towards the kids. Um, let's see, there's one more combo. Let's see, the Splash combos. Did that show it? I don't think they showed it. Oh, the Rome. So the Rome combo's been around. Those are really, really nice. There is a telescopic version of it. This is the spinning version of the Rome right here. Uh, this is a little bit like a level up from those ones I just showed you, but really nice youth combo. This is one that I would feel a lot better giving to my kids out of the two. So I'm excited to uh, show this off to my customers. Um, it's going to retail for about 40 bucks though. So not a bad, you know, something peg. You're going to see these show up in the stores. Um, I like this. It's got a wind grip on it. It's not a bad combo. So other than that, I mean, they did a couple of facelifts here and there on the Zebcos, but not a ton of changes there at all. Yeah, Frank, a lot of customers don't realize warranties are separate from, um, you know, they don't realize they got a manufacturer. David, what sucks? I'm not sure. I didn't see when that popped up, buddy. So let me know. They suck. I want to, I want to know what sucked, David. Tell me what sucked. Uh, yeah, some of them had that in the past. We'll see how it does in the new stuff. All I used to use is Quantum back in the day. Iron was three was good stuff. Bad. I mean, Quantum had some good stuff. They had some bad stuff. They they've had their issues. They, I mean, everybody has their issues here and there. Uh, especially in this industry, it's definitely tough on a lot of them uh, to find good stuff nowadays. How long we've we been going for here? About 45 minutes. So let me pull up. Um, let's pull up some Berkeley stuff. We got some time to talk about some lures. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up the PDF that I have of their catalog. Bear with me here. It's gonna take a minute to get it to load up. But Pure Fishing has some new items that I definitely want to highlight, and the reason I want to bring it up is. There is a lot of guys here in Michigan that fish a lot of Rapalas. Um, and mainly for your walleye. Okay. And these are interesting. I, they are definitely going after Rapala with this series. 100% going after Rapala for this series. And it's the hit stick. So it's got a really exaggerated rolling action. Um, if you're familiar with the Fritz crankbait from them this past year, you saw that they had these silver disc or weights on there, and that actually makes some noise and some flash to it. So I added that. So the sizing is going to go pretty much the same as Rapala. So your threes, your fives, and so on and so forth. But the interesting thing is, is that, let's zoom in here because I can't read this without it. Um, your threes, the smallest size are actually sinking. They're not floating. And then the rest of them are all floating. So that's really interesting. Great colors, a little more metallic -y type colors, but they're going to go all the way up to a six inch bait. So that's a 15 centimeter, uh, bait. So that's the same as like a 15 or so. So there's that guy. That was actually really nice. Let's go back one. Um, yeah, I got lots of work stuff here, guys. There's the catalog. Uh, let's download this. Give it a second here. Let this load up. So what do you guys think of this sign up over my, uh, shoulder right there? My mother-in-law picked that up for me. 
I dig it. I had to put it up right there so you guys could enjoy it. I'll get to Rapala here in just a minute. Just a minute. Yeah, I could probably... Yeah, Strike King's got some new stuff that is definitely interesting, especially on the Ned side of it. I like that. The one not square. Um, we'll see how that does. I, I wonder what took so long to, to do that, quite honestly. Um, what is taking so long? Let's open this up. Yeah, I'm going to have to do it this way, it looks like. There we go. All right, now we got her going. Now we're cooking with gas. So... They have a really nice catalog, by the way. So us retailers get to retailers and sales rep get to enjoy it. Um, let's scroll through all this stuff. So if you are fishing the wall up in Port Huron, there is some new grubs that might be really nice. They do come in a six inch size. Um, it will say salt water on some of the pegs, but it's really really nice. Just overlook that. They're still gonna hit it. It's just marketing to saltwater versus freshwater market. But those are really, really cool baits. Yeah, here's more of those Gulp Alive grubs with the cool colors on them. Um, this guy's pretty cool, the Paddle Shad. Got to see that in person. Uh, hopefully I'll have a sample of that soon. Uh, take all around with me. <clears throat> uh, nothing's really new and special on the jars. And there is so much stuff in here. I forgot about that. So they added a couple new frog baits. There's the beaten paddle frog. Um, they have the HD printed stuff. These look absolutely sweet in person. Uh, so that's the power bait beaten paddle frog. Uh, it's about just shy of a four inch. You get five in a bag. Probably gonna retail around five nine. Or the HDs are probably about seven ninety nine. The non HDs are like five ninety nine. If I remember it serves me right. Then there's the button speed toad. Very similar to the zoom horny toad. And I am very excited about the American toad color snow leopard. And natural leopard and bullfrog in these and i actually want to fish these uh, they're slightly bigger than the zoom horny toad so i'll be interested to try those out um let's see what else we got new here uh grass pig hd colors hollow belly sh uh like shad baits uh swim baits hd colors on those those are kind of cool got like an alley all over in here on his name and how far do I got to go in to get cranks? Holy crap, that's going deep. Uh, this is new um, for them, the pre-rigged swim shads. They've done them in the past. They brought them back. They got some holographic finishes on them. Pretty nice. Pre-rigged tubes. Maybe I, maybe I can get John over at SDI to try out some of these pre-rigged tubes for you crappie guys and perch guys. Those are pretty nice, actually. I like those. And this one in particular I really like. If you are a steelhead fisherman, that pre-rigged with the atomic teaser should be in your tackle box that thing would be perfect for a steel especially that that pink lady in the pearl orange that those two should do really really well on steelies uh let's see what else do we man that motorcycle's loud holy crap uh, da, 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 da. nothing special nothing special yeah they have lots of plastic and a scented stuff. Here we go. Terminal. Anything special in terminal? I don't think there's really anything. They got a frog hook or two. There's really nothing special in the terminal. Um, yeah, they added some rugby stuff last year. Yeah, nothing special there. Let's get to the hard baits. There we go. This is what I wanted to get to is the hard baits. So, let's see. Where is it at? dead air new colors in the dredger this is their version of the dt it is a very good crankbait that i think everybody should try out um i want to say it's 5.99 or 6.99 retail on at the first side i fished that a few times out this spring did not catch any fish on it but definitely liked how it looked in the water um here's the hit stick here's the size chart i wanted to find for you guys so you can see it but these are the disc weights down on the bottom of it. Um, this guy will sink. The rest are all going to float for you. Um, it's going to be a shallowish diver. Um, not a medium diver, not a shallow diver. Kind of in the middle. So it's going to be nice for uh, trolling in the springtime for walleye. 
down and along the mile roads. Um, hand lining and whipping. This should be an option. Um, and I want to say Joel up at Anderson Pro Bait picked that up. Johnson's already added it in there. Pilgrim Village added it in there. Jay's, uh, Frank's, I think even Northwoods, but I'm not positive. DNR, I think they all, the you know, the usual suspects have already ordered those. I'm not sure if John SDI ordered them yet or not, um, but he may. Um, this is a cool frog bait. Um, if you had seen in the Monster Bass Box um, last year, we had a bait called the Doom Turtle. It was a foam type body. This is kind of the same deal. You put a rattle in it. You can Texas rig it just like you do your plastic. So that's actually kind of neat. Um, but I think that's about it. There's some stuff in rods. There's new flicker um, shad colors coming out. Flicker minnow colors coming out. So all these HD colors. So there's going to be a lot of that going. I know a bunch of stores are already placed though. So you should start seeing those any day now in the stores. Uh, those, those should start showing up. Uh... I don't think there's anything too special in the line. Yeah, I think Rappel is the only one that's got anything special going on in the line side of things. So that's it on that front. Let's see. Let's see if I can pull, see if I have a PDF of Rappel new really quick. I might only have um, a hard copy of it, which will not be fun for you guys to look at me flipping through catalog pages and show you. But there is some new colors coming in the DTs. Uh, they are picked out and designed by Jacob Wheeler, so that's kind of nice. Um, yeah, I do not have anything on there, but I do have, if anybody's looking for a dive chart for Rappel of all their baits, hit me up. I will actually send you this PDF. It has every one of their baits Ooh, with dive dive depths on it and for what pound test that they actually run at those depths um what they're rated for so that's fairly new i haven't seen a chart like that from them in a long time so there's that so that was kind of cool to see them bring that out um but yeah so that's that's kind of the gist of what's new um i will probably do another one of these where i actually show a bunch of new baits i have boxes upon boxes of new baits I wanted to keep this short and sweet guys if you're tuned in late yes i'm still alive i have been extremely busy um selling fishing tackle all over the state of michigan for everybody i'm trying to keep the stores full for you guys it has been a full-time job and then some I drove 6,000 miles and never left the state of Michigan in the month of June. Insane amount of driving. Um, there has been more than, a, more than a few days where I've driven, you know, over 1,000 miles in a day just making rounds. Very early day start and late ending. I think the last, last road trip, I got home at 2.30 in the morning and got rolling at 5.30. So... Yeah, you want to be a sales rep in the fishing industry, you're going to do a lot of driving. <laughs> so, um, now, one thing I have not, I usually do on the channel is actually do a quick unboxing of what's in Monster Bass. And actually, this month is a theme month, and it's top water. So, I've had this in the truck. Haven't got a chance to fish any of these since I put it in the truck when I got it. Um, but I want to show you what's in it. It's actually really cool box jason hit me up on instagram or on facebook anywhere um and i can send you guys that pdf out it's really cool it's available for everybody i might as well share it um but let's start out with the the z-man we got the finesse frogs that's one of the items in the so august yeah august box man um excite baits is a newer bait company i actually really like the way that buzz bait looks it's high, high quality. I actually, this is going into the mix. This is not going to anybody else. I really like that color too. Um, K9 Fishing, it's actually a line company out of, I want to say Tennessee, I think it is. Yeah, I think it's out in Tennessee. And on the back, he's actually got a coupon code that I'm going to share with all you guys right now. So if you go to his website, k9fishing.com, and you want to try out some of this line. I, the guys that are on the team from down south that have used it say it's really, really good. But you can save 10% just by using the code. Oh, oh, oh. 
which way I gotta go? This way. There we go. Monster. You can just go to caninefishing.com and use code MONSTER to get 10% off. Um, I gotta play with this. It's supposed to be really, really nice, supple mainline fluorocarbon. I want to say it's Tennessee or Kentucky where they're based out of, so I'm looking forward to giving that a go. Um, Basic. It's a nice little small company starting to pop up. This is a popper. This has actually got a chartreuse head, even though the camera is trying to make it look orange. Sorry about that. The white balance is way off of my camera at the moment. Um, Booyah Bates Toad Runner Jr. Yes, I asked for the junior over and over and over and over again and bugged the heck out of Rick at Monster Bass. Do not do the full size. And the reasoning is is that the largemouth up here in Michigan will short strike and miss the hook on the full size like crazy. So if you're wanting to fish this style bait up here, buy the juniors for Michigan. Much better hookup ratio consistently unless you're chasing pike than fish the big guy. Um, next up is we have a, uh, this is Hendrick Fishing, a little tiny company out of the northeast part of the United States, and they have a really nice frog um, on par with the live target frogs for quality. They're really, really nice. Um, the hooks are slightly pointed up, which is a big deal on there, and they even have on the back, if you use Monster Bass 20 at Hendrick Premium, what was it? Is it Hendrick Fishing? Hendrick Premium Fishing. You go to Hendrick Premium Fishing and use code Monster Bass 20. I'll put that code up on there for you guys. Monster Bass 20. Get 20% off. Go check out these guys. It's a little mom and pop company out of the northeast part of the country, from my understanding, and they have some very nice quality frogs. Definitely, I gotta check out the rest of their offerings and check that out. Um, and we always get the sticker. I love the, uh, the this decal. I freaking love. I want to get it for carpet graphics for my boat when I get it back, or if I get a new one. I don't know what's going on with that. And then Katana Hooks. This is a little company. Uh, this was just thrown in. They're here in Mich or not Michigan, but somewhere down. I want to say Florida or Alabama. Um, so they got that. And the very last bonus. Lure to the top water box is the Patriot 2.0. This is Rick's baby. I absolutely love the paint job on this and the eyeballs. Actually, a standard eyeball, but the paint job is really nice. And from everything I'm hearing from the rest of the guys on the team, uh, it fishes extremely, extremely well. So definitely worth checking that out. If you're not subscribed to Monster Bass, please do so. Uh, use code SAVE10 or 15, whatever I got down in the description. You can save you a few bucks on there. Or just DM Rick on Instagram and say, hey, I need a code. Justin said to get a hold of you to get a code. Bug him for a freaking code. Tell him I sent you for that code. So he's got to give me credit for it. So that's the August box, guys. A couple other things, too, is they are doing a lot of sun buffs. And there's a couple new ones. There's this guy right here from Monster Bass. I like this one. This is probably some of the nicest material I've seen in a sun buff. I will wear that one quite a bit. Um, and then this one's probably the one I've been wearing the most of um, when I'm going out shopping. I don't feel like wearing a normal mask. I always got it in the truck. It's got Monster Bass logo throughout it, so that's really nice. And then there is the Monster Bass Mountain Dew logo. This is a little more of that standard material um, that you see. Uh, sun bus being made out of um but you know it is what it is but yeah they got they have a bunch of new buffs on their website go check those out guys they got some new swim baits um that went on there and kind of a an interesting story rick was approached by a chinese manufacturer um and they said this is a unique design no one has it blah 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 lo and behold somebody had it and i'm not gonna say who the company is so He's actually bought these baits before he realized that happened, and he didn't know that. And so what he's doing is giving everybody a hell of a deal on those. It's a one-off, let you guys get them and move on from there. Um, my favorite new item for 2021. Um, I'm not sure yet, Victor, what my new favorite is. Um, 
exactly just yet. I'm still evaluating things. I definitely, I think the new Zodius rod's going to be badass. I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on a few of those. Um, the the Vanford reel, I want to play with it. I'm sure it's going to be a good one. Um, there's some new stuff from Daiwa that's really interesting. Um, it should be interesting. I I haven't I haven't really picked out what my newest, latest, and greatest is going to be. Like, what's what's the top bait for next year? Um, there is a chatter bait that's worth mentioning that has a polycarbonate bill or blade on it. That should be awesome. So check that guy out. Those are already selling like hotcakes. Uh, so those are going to be hard to get a hold of. So if you've been trying to get Jackhammer, those new Jackhammer invisible blades are going to be even hotter. And it's got a totally different vibration signature, just like the Thunder Cricket and the Jackhammer. Though similar, had different sound signatures, and they have a different time and place, just like the standard Chatterbait has a time and a place, and that Freedom Tackle Chatterbait has a time and a place. It's really interesting to watching how the Chatterbaits have evolved um, over recent years. Uh, there is some cool new soft plastics coming. Uh, so keep on the lookout for that. Uh, Strength King's got new ones. Powerbait's got new ones. Um, yeah, Stealth Chatterbait's going to be pretty sweet. I, I, I dig it. It's just the blades are clear. Uh, the Jabber Jaw from 13, the Square Bill, I think that's got some potential to be a really, really cool hot product. Um, there is some new colors in the Husky Jerks from Rapala as well. Uh, lots of new products. I will actually do a separate one on lures and plastics. Um, I still have waiting on some more uh, samples to show up here at the house so I can show everybody that. So that would be really, really cool. Um, if you're, if your friend is fishing the payback out on Lake St. Clair tomorrow, um, I'm not going to be much help on what's going on in Lake St. Clair. I, 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 it's been in my peripherals, but I haven't been paying attention a lot. I know there's a lot of guys fishing the river. We're only stuck to the U.S. side, so a lot of guys are fishing on top of each other right now. Uh, fishing has been pretty solid with all things being said, how close everybody's fishing, so on top of each other. Today, the wind has been absolutely ripping out of the west. I mean, it's rolling big, so she's going to get a little dirty. Um, but yeah, payback, you only got U.S. water, so... You can run and gun all day and find fish. If it was me, my money, knowing the spots I know, I'm heading straight out from the point at Metro in fishing, or I'm going up to the river to a couple spots that I personally know and haven't really blown up anywhere on social media um, that I fished. If I was fishing tournament, that's what I would be doing. Um, but that's me personally. Um, but you're going to catch fish anywhere in the lake. What I would say is find some grass and just work and sit on that grass all day. Um, if you're seeing minnows, if you're seeing bugs, if you're seeing fish in the grass, stay there. Work spy baits, work splint, uh, swim baits, you know, working down the center of the column. Um, if you're out in 18 foot of water, throw a DT-10 and 12 or a DT-10 and DT-14 and burn it through the middle, middle of the water column. You might be shocked how that works. I used to do that with, um, I used to basically throw an underspin swim bait a spy bait and a DT crankbait or a Rashi uh, deep diver um, out there in that deeper water and cover the same water with three different baits and get reactions differently from all those fish in those areas. Uh, Ned rig, tubes, drop shot, cannot go wrong with those at all. And if you're absolutely desperate for something different, I'm going to play a video. Let me get this downloaded in here really quick. Uh, i got to find it. Give me a second here. I want to show you guys something. Something since they brought that up, what did I call it? And this is video from last year that I never ever shared with anybody. I might have put it in a fishing report, I'm not sure. I may have. Let's see, where do I got it at? I gotta find this thing, man. Hold on, let me find this file. Smallies in the read is what it's called, it's on the desktop. All right, hold on. Let me get this downloaded into the program so I can play it for you guys. But I'm going to play you a quick little clip, if I can. It's going to take it a minute to download. So, in the summertime, if you're just looking for numbers and you're desperate for numbers, you can go up onto the flats and actually fish in the reed beds and actually do pretty good. 
Um, yeah, that's not going to work that way. Hold on. I'm working on this. Give me a second here, guys. This, this uh, program I use, they've updated some things and created some new ways of sharing, which is actually quite nice, quite honestly. Let's see if I can make this into a tab. Oh, there we go. Yep, I got it as a tab. So there we go. This will work. So let me pull this up. Tab, small ice, and the read. Audio, because I want to share the audio with you guys. So, let's see. So, let me kind of explain what you guys are seeing here. So, this reed bed is about six, eight feet of water. And a lot of times what I do when I go up in there is I will actually, if I'm by myself, I'm going to do a lot of sight fishing. But if I have a partner in the boat, one of us is going to, we're both going to be throwing moving baits, looking like for wolf packs of smallmouth in there. And you'll actually run into a bunch of fish. Now that, I was fishing a Ned Rig. So just a little two-pounder, but there's a lot of quality fish up there in the reeds that you can actually hit. Middle of July, looking for smallmouth. And I am literally just pitching around the reeds here. The reeds that I'm in are like six. So tons of water. And there is smallmouth roaming around these weed patches and little wolf packs. So when I come across them, I'll get two or three really, really quick. They're not giant, but they're a lot of fun. A different way to target smallmouth out here on Lake St. Clair. Let's get back at her for a couple more. GoPro. So that was a that's something a lot of people do not do on Lake St. Clair. Dude, if I could find flatworms, I would. I I'm not kidding you. On the day after weigh-in, I because the guys know I live down here, a lot of my customers, and they're like, hey, do you have flatworms? We have customers looking for flatworms. Do you have flatworms? So that was really interesting. Uh, I don't get why everybody's going ballistic over a flatworm because there's another bait lineup. Or, um, the jig worm is almost identical to the flatworm. It has been around forever. They brought it back. It's in regular power bait. Try that one if you can't find a flatworm. Uh, I have not tried the SLX MGL because none of them are available yet here in the States. Hopefully soon. They will be here so we can all play with them. There's a Corrado MGL. Um, I might have my hands on that one sooner than the SLX, though. Um, I, as soon as I do, I will definitely do a product review, go over it with you guys once I get time. I do want to say I appreciate everybody that subscribed to the channel. We did hit 9,000 subscribers. So keep in mind, when I hit 10,000, I am going to do another massive tackle giveaway for everybody. And I probably have some of the best tackle selection in my basement out there so you guys are going to get a selection out of my private stash and i might even let somebody have some original og poor boys original poor boys i have a bunch of them i found a giant box that i totally forgot about so yeah a hundred dollars a bag you got no way a hundred dollars a bag on ebay right now okay I'm calling BS. I'm I'm searching this right now. You're saying you got I gotta see this. Yeah, there's no way it's going for a hundred dollars on there. No freaking way. If it is, whoever's paying that, you are freaking dumb if you pay that. Okay? You really are. Jesus, are you? Wow. <laughs> oh, too funny. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen that ever happen with a soft plastic before. That is interesting. <laughs> if this was a normal year, you'd be able to find this soft plastic anywhere and everywhere. Pure Fishing, is their factory and warehousing has been... Rough because of COVID all year. Wow. $10 a bag, basically. $10 a bag for freaking... 
That is too funny. I, wow. Man, I should have stocked up when our warehouse was sitting on a bunch and no one was buying it. <laughs> Hindsight 2020, man. Hindsight 2020, right? So, what else has been going on with you guys? That I did not realize was going for that much money. That is comical as all get out. I find that comical. That's just stupid. Wow. I'm baffled by that, guys. That's pretty stupid. I would never... It's soft plastics. I would borrow one from a buddy and make a silicone bone and shoot my own. That's insane. <laughs> so, yeah, that is... I, I can't believe it. $100 a bag. Unbelievable. So I'm going to go back through the comments here. See, Rappala glass shads have been killing them for me. And yeah, that's still a solid one. Not a very popular bait in Michigan, but still a solid, solid offering. Oh, those are the all, all Ollie specials. Yeah, those are all dumpster fit or dump, dumpster baits for everybody. My first reel was a build dance combo. It was nice. I upgraded to the Abu Garcia round reels. And then as I became older, I started using Shimano and Daiwa. You seen the light, buddy. You seen the light. That's all that is. That's all that was. You seen the light. Off the text, McCready here. Um, I'm not sure what he meant by they suck, but yeah. But I think that's going to be it, guys. I'm going to do another one probably in the near future um, and go over some new baits. I have a bunch. I've talked a little bit about some baits. Most of this is just about reels that are coming out, a little bit of rods. Um... I do want to say, guys, be patient with me uh, through this time of year. This is normally my busiest time of the year. So if you're here on the channel last year, you know I basically went MIA for about two and a half, three months. And then I got into the ice fishing stuff and started rolling. So be patient with me. This is normally my busiest time of the year. And I want I scheduled out strictly tonight so I can have a quick little you know live stream with you guys to kind of go over some new stuff. And just say hey, say hi, and thank you for sticking with me, guys. Uh, when I hit 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube, I am going to do a massive giveaway or take you shopping. I don't know. I might take someone shopping if they're local. Or I might just give them a gift card and let them go to town at one of their local bait, preferably a local bait store. Um, I think that would be kind of cool. Maybe I'll uh, do a tour, you know, depending on where you live. You, if you're here in Michigan, maybe I'll take you around a couple of your local shops and we'll spend some money. Um, in them just to help out your local shops or maybe i'll just let you pilfer my stash down in the basement some more so but i, I want to find flatworms i guess but they're nowhere to be found right now i'm sorry guys no flatworms to be found let me see if our warehouse got more in give me a second i'm gonna see let me see if our warehouse got any more in i doubt it did like, every one of my computers has got my work log in, it seems. Make sure you guys can't see it. You can't see my work log. Good. Don't want you to see that. That would be bad. Let's see what we got. Oh. It would help me if I typed everything correctly. All right, flatworm. Searching the, searching our database. Let's see what we got. Yeah, I have flatworms in pearl in stock. So run over to SDI. Tell John to go order a whole bunch of pearls. He'll get them in for you guys. You ain't got dibs. You got to get over to John at SDI and... Let him know. <laughs> Want a firstborn? Nah, I'm good. I don't. I have two beagles. I'm good right now. Uh, but yeah. So that's gonna be it for the night, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, a little odd of a deal, but you know, dude, there's not 40 feet in Lake St. Clair at all. It's not that deep. Uh, but yeah. 
Anyways, guys, I wanted to sign off. Thank you for tuning in tonight, and hopefully soon I'll get back into the regular swing of things, doing product reviews for you guys, showing you everything that's going on. Hopefully I'll have my boat back soon, and we can go out and go fish. Fingers crossed, maybe I get some late perch action or something in, but odds are it'll probably be ice fishing or salmon fishing in the rivers for me from here on out. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in, and as always, tight line, happy casting, and we'll see you in the next video. Mm-hmm.